Hello, good morning and welcome everybody. Um, <clears throat> welcome to Friday with Heather. Uh, we're doing a Hatha style yoga practice today. So it's, it's accessible for all people, you know, whether you're an avid strong yogi or um, an athlete or whether you're um, struggling to get to the floor, you know, you take what you need from this and then modify and adjust it where you can. So uh, the focus this month is change. Um, and with that in mind, you know, the only constant we do have is change. So learning to understand that um, things happen for a reason and learning to be open to them and um, letting go of any attachments that we do have when we do get set in our ways. It's very hard when we start to age, I tell you. <laughs> so that's why um, that concept of change is really important to think about. On a physical level, um, the practice is similar to last week's. However, I wanted to change it, strangely enough, um, just so you can explore the postures in a different way. Um, some of it will be familiar. Uh, and I wanted you to know that um, I offer you two types of this practice, just so you can go back and revisit it and repeat and do the same sequence and then do the next one another time. They say that if you practice yoga one day, and then wait a few days, like every third day is when you need to get back on your mat again to keep the energetic quality within your system alive. So that's food for thought for today. So we'll open the hip flexors, the IT bands, we'll stretch into the hips, um, and also the shoulder girdle for the desk workers. Um, and also the, the reason why we're working in the lower region is because of the people who are running and walking, bike riding. It's a great way to stretch and lengthen into these spaces to support you during this time physically. We'll also have pranayama, um, lion's breath and um, kapalabhati, which is a skull radiant breath. I'll extract that when we get closer. And um, meditation as well. So we'll begin just to anchor ourselves into the practice. So now we will need blocks, possibly. Um, you might need a strap uh, and or a towel. You know that could work as well, or something to sit on too if you feel like you need to raise the buttocks a bit when we're moving through our seated postures. So it's still right, uh, left, right week. So bring the right foot in, followed by the left, and maybe sit on a block if you feel that's better for you, or sit on a cushion, or you can even sit on a chair. So now just sit comfortably, you know, rest your hands on your thighs or you can take meditation mudra where the left palm is down, the right hand is on top and the two thumbs touch. And then just feel the spine is vertical and then draw the chin in a little and just take a few moments to check in with your breath. Just feeling the breath in your body. You know, noticing the quality of your breath. You know, this is one thing we can all do, breathe, but it's whether you know the capacity of your breath is another thing. And cultivating that awareness of the breath is a really magical experience if you allow yourself to explore it. Now today we'll do it a little bit differently. We're going to just draw the breath awareness to the nostrils first and foremost and feel the breath on the edge of the nostrils. Now you'll notice that cool inhale as you breathe in, somewhere on the edge of the nostrils. And as you exhale, there's a warmth of breath that leaves the body. It might come out just the top of the lip there or the edge of the nostrils. You might just feel that, just connect with that. Now we'll begin to just deepen the breath a little bit more. So just invite the breath in and take it right to the pit of the belly. And then feel the belly expand. And then when you exhale, just feel that surrender, like a little bit of letting go. Just do that a few more times, just allowing the belly to be soft and relaxed and pliable. Now draw the breath awareness maybe to the front of the chest. Feel the expansiveness here. 
And just feel that a few times. Just take a few breaths there. Just connect in with this beautiful breath in your body. And now draw the breath to the back of the ribs, the back of the body, and just feel the expansiveness there. You might feel the back thoracic area. You might feel a little bit of tension there that you didn't think was there and is there. Now draw the breath under the armpits without lifting the collarbones. Maybe feeling the lift there under the armpits. Now draw the breath all the way back down to the pelvic girdle. Breathe it all the way down there. Relax the pelvic girdle, the TA, and just maybe feel the breath in the, in the lower sacrum area. Maybe you can inhale the breath all the way to the back space. So healing and soothing when you slow the breath right down. Now just sit here with your breath and anytime you feel a sensation in your body, Draw the breath awareness to that space, whether it's the shoulder or the big toe, or maybe it's the hip. And then allow the exhale to let you surrender and relax into the moment. Letting go of what was. And not thinking about what is to come and just being here in this moment here. Now the mind might start to talk to you because your body might be talking to you as well. So just a few more moments here, just trying to deepen the breath and maybe feeling the balance of the breath. And this is the balanced breath we're trying to use in our practice as we move mindfully throughout our And it's a few more moments now, so just bring awareness back to the edge of the nostrils. And slowly blinking open the eyes and rolling straight over into Adamukkavarasana. So toes touch and the knees go wide and you come down to the mat. So this is the wide version, however you can bring the knees together if you prefer. And then come on down, now whether you stack fists and rest head on fists, or whether the forehead comes down or whether you're resting on the forearms, just come down here and just take a moment to welcome the breath into the body. Now again, explore the breath in the back of the ribs. And then with your exhale, see if you can sink a little bit further into this humble posture. And while you're here, reflect on what your intention is today and where you need nurturing the most. So now coming up onto our hands and knees, we're going to begin with a few cat cows this morning. So knees under hips, wrists under shoulders, and the spine is long. So lower the tailbone just a little and draw the tummy in so you have a really straight spine. So take an inhale together first. You can tuck your toes too if you like, and an exhale. Then inhale, lift sitting bones, look up. Exhale, lower tailbone, bring chin to chest. Inhale, lift sitting bones, look up. Exhale, lower tailbone, bring chin to chest. Now this is like a wave. So see if you can feel the wave starting at the tailbone and a gradual opening and lifting of the head. Lowering the tailbone, chin to chest. One more lift up, look up. You can close your eyes for the last one. Lower the tailbone, bring chin to chest. 
And this time, just come up again with sitting bones. Look up. One more. Look up between the eyebrows. And then come to neutral spine. Now tuck your toes if they're not already tucked. And just bring the knees back just a little. And push up to your downward dog. I'm holding here. You can walk the dog out a little if that's what you need today. So just feel the stretch in the legs. And then maybe once you've done that, you might want to wag the doggy, puppy dog's tail. It's a bit of a wiggle in the hip. And then maybe you can try some pulses in the upper thoracic area. So see how you're opening up into the space. So the reason we do these ones is so we can access binds and twists. Now hamstrings get a really good workout anyway, so let's work on an area that we probably neglect. Okay, holding still. Take a breath in and a breath out. Now we're going to raise the right leg high and lengthen through the heel. Rotate the right thigh under so you square the hips. Breathe in, push through the floor. External rotation through the shoulders. As you exhale, feel the left heel come down a little bit more. One more breath. Exhale. Now bring the knee in and then plant the foot down and lower the right knee. Ah, there we go. So just a nice hip flex uh, stretch here. A little pulse is kind of nice. You don't have to pulse. You can hold still. Just holding here. And now we'll move back and just lengthen through the hamstrings. Now the blocks are great to have. If you feel you want to lift and open the chest, you can do that. Looking up, chest is lifted. And now bringing the hands back down and pushing back to your plank. Now let's check our plank out, lengthen through heels, lower the, lower the tailbone a little, external rotation through the shoulders. Quadriceps are like rocks. <laughs> so now lower the knees and push back to Balasana. Just take one breath here and a slow exhale. Now inhale, come up, tuck toes, push back to your downward dog. Take one breath in and a slow breath out. Now lift the left leg high, flex through the ball of the foot and the heel. Rotate the left thigh under so you square the hips. Feel the exhale where the right heel can lower down to the mat a little bit. Shaking a little bit now? I am. <laughs> so now bring the foot in and lower it in between the hands and lower the right knee. So now just a little stretch here to wake up. You might want to squeeze the opposite thigh and feel like you need more support there. You can use your blocks as well if you'd like to try that. And now we'll just rock back and tickle up the hamstrings a bit. Yeah, that's it. Flex through the foot. Look up, chest up. Take your blocks if you need. And just take some moments just to notice the breath here. Now, first and foremost, take care of yourself and look after yourself. Ahimsa, number one yama in yoga philosophies, Patanjali. And Satya, truthfulness. What do you need from this practice today? Step forward and fold in. Uttanasana. Hold here just for a moment. Bend the knees, get the belly on the thighs. Now we're just going to slowly come up vertebra at a time and come to standing. Ah, welcome back. So now let's bring our hands in front, clap them together if you like, <laughs> raise arms up and then bring them down. Let's begin our practice with the sound of arms standing. Let's take a slow exhale together and inhale into arm, inhaling. Oh. Now it's time for you to dedicate your practice to loved ones, friends, family, or possibly to your higher self. Dedicate the fruits of your practice. Open your eyes. Classical Suri Namaskar, three rounds, three variations. Let's go. Breathe in together, raise arms up. Little lean back if you wish, chin comes in and fall forward. Step the right leg back, lower the right knee, look forward, chest forward. Step back to your plank. Lower the knees and push back to Balasana. 
This is option one. Inhale, come up, tuck toes, downward dog, Adho Mukha Shavasana. Step the right leg through, lower the left knee, look forward, chest forward. Step to the top of your mat and fold in. Arms come in front and up you come. Lean back, come down past third eye to the heart space. Because all, practice, all practices should be coming from here, everybody. Let's go, breathe in, come up. Lean back, fall forward. Left foot goes back, lower the knee, look forward, chest forward. Step back to your plank. Lower down the knees, buttocks to heels. Stretch out. Inhale, come up, tuck toes, push back to downward dog. Step the left leg through, lower the right knee, look forward, chest forward. Step to the top of the mat and fold in. Arms come in front, raise up. Keep the knees bent as you lift up and looks, over, looks after the back. Come down past third eye to heart space. Repeat, arms go up. Just look for the variations here. Breathe and feel the body moving, exhale. Halfway lift, hands to shins. Step back the right leg, lower the right knee. Raise arms up, Anjani Asana. Bring the hands down. Step back to your plank. Lower down knees, you can go to buttocks, to heels, or you can come through Ashtang Pranam, elbows are in, chin chest down. Bhujangasana. Adamukha Shnavasana, downward dog. Right leg steps through, lower the left knee. Arms can come up, you can keep them on the floor as well. Bring the hands down, step forward, toes touch, halfway lift, fold in. Arms come up, with a smile on the face, lean back, come down past third eye to heart space. Left side, arms come up, arms come down, bend the knees, halfway lift, plant hands, left leg goes back, lower the knee, look forward, chest forward, breathe in, arms come up, arms come down, step back to your plank, lower the knees, Ashtang Prana, buttocks are high, chin and chest down, Bhujangasana, Toes touch, one tail. Adamukashnavasana, downward dog. Left leg steps through, lower the right knee. Arms come up. Bring the hands down. Step forward. Halfway lift. Fold in. Come on up. Come down past third eye to the heart space. One more sequence. Here we go. Arms come up. Lean back. Fall forward. Halfway lift. Plant hands. Right leg goes back. Lower the knee. Raise arms up. Then exhale. Bring them back. Interlace fingers. Lengthen. Inhale. Exhale. Sink down. Bring the hands back. Step back to plank. Lower down knees, chest, chin, ashtang, pranam. Bhujangasana, one tail, toes touch. Adho Mukha Shnavasana, downward dog. Right leg steps through, lower the left knee. Arms come up. Arms come back. Interlace, lengthen. And exhale, sink in. Plant the hands down and step forward. Take your halfway lift, fold in and come up. Come down past third eye to the heart space. One more round, left side, arms come up, lean back, fall forward. Halfway lift, plant hand, set the left leg back, lower the left knee. Arms come up. Arms come back, interlace, lengthen, sink in. Bring the hands down, 
Step back to your plank and lower down knees, chest, chin. Bhojangasana, Adha Mukhasana Vasana. Left leg goes through, lower the right knee, arms come up, arms come back. Squeeze, lengthen, sink. Bring the hands down and step forward. Take a halfway lift, fold in, come on up. Come down past third eye to the heart space. Now just take a few moments here. Breathe in the breath and feel the energetic quality you've got going on inside. Open the eyes. Big long stance out, long leg stance. Hands on hips. So Vavadrasana, two. Legs first. So heel segments the arch at the back. Bend the knee. Shin is vertical. Ball of the foot pushed down. And then outside blade of the back leg pushed down. You should feel the arches lifting. If you have bad arches, this is good to lift them up. So the knee goes towards the pinky toe. Now we're going to move here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, sink. Inhale, lengthen. Not too much of a straight, just a little bit. Exhale, sink. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, sink. Now, hands come down. Variation. Inhale, lengthen up. Look up. Back to the palms touch. Look up with the eyes. Exhale, come down. Inhale, look up. Lengthen up, straight leg. Exhale, sink. Lower tailbone. Tummies in. Inhale, look up. Lengthen up. Exhale, sink. Okay. And raise to warrior two arms. So shoulders relax down the back. Looking over the middle finger. The spine is vertical. Lower the tailbone just a little. Bring the knee to the pinky toe. I'll let you breathe now. One more breath. Now bring the hands back to the hips and we're going to step to the top of the mat. So take little steps if you need and just come up and touch your toes together. A little mini vinyasa to keep us warm. Arms come up, bring the hands down, halfway lift, come back down again, and arms come up. Come down past third eye to the heart space. Now we're stepping the right leg back, hands to hips. Here we go. Long leg stance to the half, Bend the knee, push on the outside layer, check heel, the segment in the arch of the back, hands on hips, knee towards pinky toe, outside blade down, inhale, lengthen, exhale, sink, inhale, lengthen, exhale, sink. It's nice to move before we hold a stagnant posture. If you prefer to keep moving, then keep moving if that feels more comfortable for you. Okay, bring hands down, little clap, inhale, lift up, straighten leg, look up, exhale, bend. Inhale, look up, exhale, bend. Inhale, look up, exhale, bend. Now bring arms to warrior two, shoulders are relaxed down the back, armpits are down. Knee to build pinky toe. <clears throat> Take a few moments here. Two more breaths. Bring hands to hips, break the pose, step up. <clears throat> Pranamasana, <clears throat> we'll go through a vinyasa again. Inhale, lift up, just a half one. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come up. Exhale, you should have a nice steady rhythm with your breath. Now stepping out, nice long stance. Again, <clears throat> excuse my froggy throat. So warrior two legs. Now last week we've drawn the hands together. 
This week, come to Pasha Kanasana, forearm to thighs, nice blade hand. The left arm is up and over to the right legs in front. Now here you can stay exactly where you are. You can look up at the fingertips, just draw the chin a little, and maybe you stay there. Now don't dump down too much, lift up. Push on the outside blade of that back leg, back foot again, and then feel the length to the fingertips. That's your inhale. And the exhale is when you open the chest. Now, if you wanna play, you can also lower the right hand down to a block or to the floor. And the arm sort of tries to just lengthen and stretch. And if you wanna play a bit more, we can lift the arm up, rotate the hand, and then bring it to the, the right thigh, just tuck it in. And then it helps you lift and twist and open up. One more breath. Now inhale, come out as we came in, lengthen up. Come up to Parshvakanasana, and then raise up to Warrior Two. Ooh, hands to hips. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Step up. Pranamasana, take a breath in. And a breath out. Hands to hips, step out, worry of two legs again. Nice, strong, very vidrasana. Outside blade of foot down, ball of the front foot, knee to pinky toe. <clears throat> Parshvakanasana, forearm to thigh, right arm up and over. Feel the length. Push on the outside blade of that right foot, lengthen through the fingertips. Inhale, exhale, maybe right shoulder lifts open a little. Maybe the left hand comes down to the floor or a block. I'll show you what that looks like. Maybe the right arm comes up, rotate, and it comes to the thigh or the back, or wherever you feel it's enough for you. So I really want to open this chest. One more breath. Now inhale, raise the arm up, rotate it. Come back to partial Kanasana if you're there. And then back to Warrior Two. Now we just step forward. Step, kick the block out of the way. <laughs> oh, right. Thurabhadrasana one. So now hands to hips, step the left leg back. Spin the heel down. So if you're finding your balance is a bit off in Verbadrasana 1, you can always step the back foot across a little and give your hips more space. Now, we, don't want, we want the hips to face forward, but we don't want to force them. The way we do that is we just rotate this left thigh under a little and it might naturally square the hips. But don't be worried if they're not square. If they're open, then that's how your body is. So please don't force a posture. Be smart and be logical how you are in your position. So hands to hips. Let's bend and straighten. Inhale, exhale, bend. So shin is vertical, pushing the ball of the front foot. Still the same concept, back blades down. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Now let's raise the arms straight up to vertical. Now whether you have the hands separate because to relax the shoulders down the back, don't let the bottom ribs pop up, bring them in. And maybe the palms come together if that's what you prefer. Close the eyes and check in with your breath now. Once you've got the posture all settled, see where your breath is at. Bring hands to hips, pick up the back heel and step forward. Pranamasana, take a breath in and a breath out. Hands to hips and we'll swap feet over. So step the um, right foot back and spin the heel down. Now again, if you need to create more space, step the foot across a little. Don't be shy, you know, work with your body. Rotate that left thigh, right thigh under. Shin is vertical. Let's go. Lengthen on the inhale, straighten on the exhale. Lengthen, straighten. Lengthen, I mean, sink into it. Don't straighten it. Let's just sink. <laughs> inhale, 
Exhale, hold it here. Ready to raise the arms, inhale. Exhale, now sink in here. Feel the edge of that blade down. Rotate the thigh under. Adjust, then breathe. And just find some stillness. You know, even though we're still, we're still working the body. Two more breaths here. Okay, hands to hips, pick up the back heel and step forward. Toes touch, Tadasana. Hands to hips, let's keep moving. Back leg comes back, to the right leg's in front, shin is vertical. Now, this one, we're going to come and interlace fingers straight away. Last week we went and moved with it. This time we're just going to come in, roll shoulder blades down the back, inhale, lift up, look up, and exhale, fall down. Straight into it today. <laughs> So rest the shoulder on the knee and bring the crown of the head down. This is just a little humble experience for you today. One more breath. Now bring the hands down, pick up the back heel. Here's the difference, guys. Bring the knee under the hip. Rise up. So we want to create knee under hip and ankle under knee. So coming into a, a vertical twist. So if you practice with me, you know I do this one a fair bit. Inhale, lengthen. But we're not going to, we're going to stay vertical. We really want to experience the spine twisting. Exhale, twist on the midline all the way. And then we're not going anywhere, just staying right here. You might feel that in the hip flexor. And as you breathe in, you lengthen the spine, tune in a little. And the exhale, you just twist a little bit more. And eventually the dristy and the head comes through if you have the range. Close the eyes and just experience what you're experiencing. You know, we do twists and side bends to free the spine so the energy can travel, the prana, the life force. And you know, it doesn't have to be difficult for you to enjoy and experience some energetic qualities. One more breath. Now come out of it, inhale, let's reverse, lift arm up, hands to the floor. Step back to your plank. And here we're gonna take a little chaturanga. So if you like to chaturanga, shift the weight forward, and elbows come in, squeeze in. You can lower the knees as well, or you might like to come to Udva Mukha. Roll over those toes, and then push back to Downward Dog. Or you can just step forward if you really wanted to step forward. So let's rise up and our fingers and thumbs if you choose. You don't have to do that. That's great for strengthening the wrists. Bend the knees, look forward, inhale, step up, jump up, float up. Take your halfway lift, fold in, then knees come up. Come down past third eye to the heart space. Now let's swap legs over. So, warrior one. Yeah. So we're going to stay here and we're going to raise the arms up and then bring them back. Lengthen out. Inhale, humble warrior. Exhale, fall down. Now, I forgot to mention when we were here, I'd like you to draw your attention to the breath and the back of the body. Up the shoulder blades, the scapulas, all in the back body. And allow the exhale to maybe lift the arms a little if you like. This is one for those people who sit at their desks and need a little bit of opening up in the shoulder girdle. Bring the hands down, frame the foot, and bring the knee under the hip. Now come up. Oh, now raise the right arm up. Take your exhale and then begin to twist and then to gradually bring the back of the palm, back of the hand to the outside of the knee. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And exhale as you twist a little bit more. Now the eyes come around, the head comes around. 
but only come to where your neck feels comfortable. And close the eyes if you feel you need to really cut off that sense of sight. One more breath. Come out, we inhale first and exhale, unravel, raise arms up, bring hands down. Step back to the plank or you can step forward from here. And then we'll come through uh, Ashtang Pranam this time. Let's mix it up. Chin and chest comes down or you can take Chaturanga. Little Bodhimgasana. And then Adha Mukha Shinavasana. Raise up to your fingers and thumbs if you wish. Bend the knees, look forward. Inhale, step up, jump up, float up. <laughs> Halfway lift, fold in. Then the knees come up. Exhale. Oh, right, that's the standing stuff out of the way. Just some balances now to help with our proprioception development. So we're going to inhale, bend knees, raise arms, Utkatasana, chair pose. This is intense, this chair pose. If we held this for a little while, you'd find your heart rate will rise just by being here. But we won't do that to you today. Let's do some lion's breath to clean out all the toxins in the body, to help with our speech, to, if you have a stutter, this is a really good one to practice. Are you ready? Breathe in. Exhale, draw back the elbows and shoulders and stick out the tongue. Come on, let's have some fun. Breathe in. Act like no one's watching. <laughs> Breathe in. Even the kids love this one. Try it with your kids. Inhale. Exhale. Sink down a bit more. Inhale. One more. Exhale. Inhale, come up. Exhale, release. Preparing now for our balance pose. So let's get to dust in the body. Activate quadriceps, draw tummy in. Inhale through chest, shoulders relax down the back. Lower the tailbone just a little. If the tummy is on, it really helps with the balance in postures and you get more awareness of where you are in space. So shift the balance to, I'm going to try and mirror you, <laughs> to the right leg and bend up the opposite leg. Yeah. So just mirror, you just do it, you just follow me. <laughs> now, in externally, externally rotate, place on the top of the heel, the knee, sorry, the ankle goes just above the knee. I've lost my words here. That didn't work, did me, that line spread? Yeah. All right, flex the foot here, sink down, prayer hands here. Now lengthen through the arms, stay here. One more breath. Now we're going to lift up, come back to prayer hands. You can stay there or you can lengthen and kick back into Virabhadrasana. Three, or actually it's aeroplane pose, but Virabhadrasana three, if you want to play, we lengthen arms forward and take, I'll come to the side so you can see. One more breath. And now let's return the foot back to the mat, consciously and aware. Let's swap the to the other side. So activate through the core areas, chest lifted, bend up the opposite leg, bend the standing leg, come to prayer hands. Nice stretch here for the IT band. Maybe arms come back. You want to really rotate and express the chest a bit better. Sink down a bit more. Come up and say a little prayer as you go back to aeroplane pose. So rotate the left thigh under, chin in a little. Let's lift the chest. We don't want to sink down too much. We just want to stay parallel with the floor and maybe play and bring the arms out the front. You can take Kali Mudra, fingers point, interlace, the pointer fingers point, interlace fingers, thumbs hook around. She will remove any obstacles in your way, I promise. Okay, break the pose. Oh, right, let's come to the mat. So come back further onto the mat 
about three quarters of the way back, have your blocks ready. And then we're just going to come to our squat. So edges of the feet are parallel with edges of the mat. And we're going to just bend down. Bend down, stay down, buttocks down low. Hold it there. And then bring fingertips to the floor. That might be where you stay. Now, there's no graceful way to do this if you find this difficult. I have seen some yogis put blocks there and they come down and sit on it. I find it just gives me a false sense of security. I like prefer the mat. So we take the mat and we squat. Hold the mat. Use the block under your buttock if that's what you like. I tried that this morning and I couldn't get back up again. <laughs> so lift the buttocks up, pick the heels up, squat down like a frog. Yeah, this is great for your toes, your ankles. There is another one I was going to show you, but I think I'll leave that. It's like fire toes. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try it? Okay, I heard you will say. Right, bring these together. Keep the toes tucked. We only do it for a few breaths. So toes are tucked, sit back, lengthen through fingertips. <sighs> yeah, it's intense, but it's very good for you, I promise. Just take it easy. All right, return the hands to the floor, flick toes back. Now take your block and sit on your block if that's what you like. And then we'll just sit down. Couple of RT. So this is great for the diaphragm, for the tummy muscles, the cerebral fluid in the back of the... Back there, it also clears nasal issues that you've got going on, hence the tissue is really handy. Good for the morning. So we have straight arms and all the, if you have high blood pressure or you're pregnant or heart conditions, then maybe don't do this practice, just do a balanced breath, counting to four, hold and exhale to four. The rest of us, we inhale, fill the belly, push it out and snap it back. It's a, and then it's not just fly everywhere. I apologise, you're not here, but you might your person next to you might be happy about it. <laughs> Let's go. We're going to do 20 rounds three times. Inhale. Three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Fifteen. Twenty. Now inhale. Lift pelvic floor, tummy in, chin to chest. Hold it. Two, three, four, and release. Two. Three, four. Inhale, pull, pull out the belly. Exhale, couple of body. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, inhale, big breath in. Lift pelvic floor, tummy in, chin to chest. So this is a lock we're applying now to help with the energy trap. So we're going to be full of life today <laughs> and release. One more round. Just take a breath in first. And breath out. Inhale. Here we go. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One big breath in. Lift pelvic floor, chin to chest. Hold it. And release. And just keep the eyes closed and just notice. You might need to do more rounds of it. So you could always, when you go to rewatch it, you could always stop it and go for five rounds of 20 breaths. Or maybe you can go for 40. You know, it's up to you. Play around with it. There's no, no hard and fast rules. So coming up now, crossing feet over and sitting back on our buttocks. So last week we did um, Goomba Kasana and Agapadarashana on our back. But this time we're going to do it seated. So... Bend up the, I'm doing my left leg and just bring it over. This is first option. You will need your strap or your towel. I'm just going to use a towel today because you probably will have one of those. I'm going to use a towel. That's option one. If you would like to prefer to do the second option, bring the left hand through, take the right ankle and bring the knee parallel, the thigh parallel with the edge of the mat as best you can. And this leg comes on top. Now, at the moment, it doesn't look like it's right. So lift up, try and put the knee, the right, the left knee on top of the right knee, hold the feet and sit down like so. Now, you might find one foot's back a bit and one foot's up a bit. As long as you feel not too uncomfortable, stay here. It's good for you, I promise. <laughs> 
So now we're going to come to the arms. So we're going to take this right arm is going to lift up with your towel and then just fingertips hang down, hang on to the towel, elbow points up. The left arm is going to come out, palm up as far as you can go, then twist it and then take a hold of your strap or your fingertips. And then right arm lifts up, left arm goes back. Now, if you feel like you're doing this, then you probably just need to release one of the arms just to give you some release in the neck. So lift up, down, right arm up, left arm down. And then you can also lean forward, keeping the spine straight. No hunching over in the shoulders. So don't do this, do this. Okay, now let's break the pose, just releasing and letting go. This leg now is going to come up and just place the foot on the ground, the left foot. And the right foot, I want you to mirror the top of the mat, like a parallel, shin parallel to the top of the mat. Coming into Agnastambhasana or square pose. Now, this posture, some people come and arrive and the left knee comes up. You, If that's the case for you, cross it in front, like a cross-legged posture. If you look inside the inner line of your leg, it sort of looks like a diamond a triangle shape. If not, you can bring the foot on top. Keep the foot flexed, protects the knee. So you must flex the foot. Here, yeah, we just sit. Now you should feel an intense stretch. If this knee is up, please don't do it like that. Please put the foot in front. I can't see what you're doing, but please look after yourself. Holding here and just closing the eyes. Now here you can visualize the breath, traveling up the spine from the bottom of the sacrum, all the way up to the crown of the head does a little turn around and then comes all the way back down again. Inhale up, exhale down. And cultivating the awareness of prana in the spine. One more breath. Inhale, coming up. Now, we're going to plant this left foot down. We're going to bring the right heel closer to the buttock, coming into a seated twist, Adha Matsi Andrasana. So place this left hand down, raise the right arm up, and then twist. So inhale, lengthen, nice. Uh, my forearm travels along the thigh. Exhale and twist. Look over the shoulder if you feel you need to. Close the eyes. Here we're filling up on all the life force, breathing it in. And exhale, it's that letting go, surrendering. You know, letting go is a really amazing feeling. It helps because we are not perfect. We are imperfect. One more breath. Now coming out, take a breath in together first. And exhale, unravel. Uncross the legs. Now, if you are coming through Gulma Kasana with straight leg, uh, with the bent legs, then keep them bent. And we just take the left foot, bring it under, or all you have the straight leg and the right leg goes on top. So bring the left foot under and the right leg comes on top. So pick up, lift up, see if you can jimmy your knees together and then sit down. You can try and work the feet out a bit too if that's in your practice. You want to try and play with it if you're flexible. And then we take our strap or blanket and this arm comes up and over. Try not to hit yourself in the face. <laughs> Done that before. So elbow points up and the one where the leg is over, this one's going to go out, palm up all the way, round, round, round. Flip it when you get as far as you can and take a hold of the strap or your fingertips. The right arm goes up and the left arm goes down. And then maybe start to lean a bit. Just intensifies the stretch a little bit more. One more breath. 
Inhale and release. Okay, now we're going to come to Agnes and Vasana or square pose. So the shin is vertical, the left shin, the right shin either comes, just crosses over. So feet are flexed again. And then or you can place a foot on top in line with the knee, flexing the feet. This protects the knees, lengthen the spine, and then just come to where you feel there's that edge. You know, we, in yoga, we talk about this edge in a posture. So it's just knowing where you feel, you can feel a little bit, but you're not feeling discomfort. And you'll notice if you keep practicing and keep moving in this way, it changes your life. It changes the way you think, it changes the way you move. It's really a, an evolution to the self. I know it's hard when you're a yogi and you're practicing in the gym, but I am who I am. And hopefully you take something from it when you finish. Okay, release the pose. Now just slide that top foot over and bring the, the bottom foot, the bottom foot back, or you can have it straight if that feels better for you in this twist. Place the um, right hand behind, inhale the left up, and then exhale and twist. Breathe in, lengthen. Exhale and twist. Breathe in. Breathe out. Now feel the breath in the twist. Feel where there is, I suppose, a little bit of block in the twist. One more breath. Inhale together first. Exhale, unravel. So uncross the legs and lengthen the legs out along the mat. Now we're about to come to Shavasana, but before we do, if um, you feel that you've enjoyed this practice today and you might want to put your clothes on while I'm talking to you, socks and jumpers, then you need to come and like it you need to subscribe as well and um, you can also write comments too um, I know I'm learning too about YouTube so yeah so if you want to keep it moving forward then you have to support us and keep us alive in the cyber world <laughs> so let's raise the arms up inhale length it up exhale lower down so use your tummy muscles to lower you down let's stop halfway oh sorry I thought we were finished going to Shavasana I tricked you <laughs> That does happen sometimes. Let's lower down a little bit more. Bend the knees if you need. All the way down. So when the hands come down, the head comes down. Touch the mat. Now bend the knees up and bring them into your tummy and just plant the feet down. Lift the buttocks up and lengthen the buttocks towards the heels. Now here you've got the nice long spine on the mat. And at the same time, if you can, draw the feet down the mat, splay the feet out. Turn the left palm up and the right palm up. And then lift the head off the mat. Feel the whole length of the spine. And then settle into your Shavasana. Take a big breath in here. And a gentle sigh out through the mouth. Another big breath in. And another gentle sigh out of the mouth. Now, when we rest in Shavasana, it is a time when the body allows the processing of all the energetic qualities that you've just moved through today. So as you melt down into the mat, I want you to be really still and then just draw the breath in and out and observe that beautiful sinking feeling that you're witnessing. You know, the buzz between your ears, the heaviness of the feet and the arms and the legs, and that, and I suppose it's like a melting in. 
So I'll leave you now while you just settle in to your world. And I'll be back with you very shortly. Become aware of the body lying on the mat. Maybe noticing the sounds you can hear around you. And feeling the breath in the chest as you inhale. Noticing the ribs as they expand. And then maybe beginning to awaken the physical body by moving the fingers and the toes. And then taking the great stretch, lengthen the arms above the head. And then drawing the knees into the tummy, and give them a big squeeze. And then place the feet down and roll to your right side. And rest the head on the arm, the right arm. And then gently push yourself up and come to a comfortable seat. Bring your hands to prayer in front of heart space. And we'll conclude with Mangala Mantra, call and response. Om Asatoma. Om Asatoma. That's your turn. Sat Gamaya. Your turn. Sat Gamaya. Tamasoma. Tamasoma. Joy Tirgamaya, Joy Tirgamaya, Marichoma, Marichoma, Amritam Gamaya, Amritam Gamaya, Om Shanti, 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 your turn. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May the divine light travel through your heart and soul so you radiate joy, love and compassion to those who walk on your path. Namaha. Thank you.